Hello everyone, it is March the 30th, 2015. This article from Breitbart. Obama rolls out plan to use UN to circumvent Congress on Israel-Iran. There he is. Interesting that he has his back to the camera. I think that's a little rude. I'm a little insulted by that. In the aftermath of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's big electoral win on Tuesday, the Obama administration reportedly seeks to use the United Nations as a club with which to beat those recal citrant Jews into line. According to foreign policy, the Obama administration may stop blocking United Nations efforts to, quote, call for resumption of political talks to conclude a final peace settlement, end quote, between Israelis and Palestinians. The fact that the United Nations wants to force Israel, a fully functioning diverse democracy, into negotiating with a terrorist regime led by Palestinian Authority and Hamas demonstrates the moral bankruptcy of the institution. More importantly, it demonstrates that President Obama's big power grab is just beginning. Well, it's not just beginning. It's been going on for a while. When Obama took office, some of the conservative right worried deeply about the possibility of Obama utilizing the United Nations in order to cram down internationalist leftism on Americans. Books and articles emerged talking up the threat of Agenda 21, a non-binding plan from the United Nations designed to create sustainable development code for dramatic regulation of anything that could impact the environment. More conservatives became concerned with UN Resolution 1618 shepherded through the institution by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and designed to combat the quote stereotyping, negative profiling and stigmatization, stigmatization of people based on their religion, end quote. The rev resolution represented a predicate for a, quote, international blasphemy law. Wow. As liberal law professor John Turley wrote. Finally, conservatives fretted over the UN Arms Trade Treaty signed by the Obama administration. As National Rifle Association spokeswoman Catherine Mortison said, quote, we are worried about an end run around Congress. Barack Obama, or a future anti-gun president, could use ATT and international norms compliance to rationalize enacting gun control policies through executive actions, especially at the import and export realms, end quote. Secretary of State Kerry blathered at the time, make no mistake, we would never think about supporting a treaty that is inconsistent with the rights of American citizens to be able to exercise their guaranteed rights under our Constitution. Well, I don't believe that for a second, because every single day these people are destroying the Constitution. Obviously, no domestic legislation has yet enacted this international regime of dangerous gibberish, but the danger of Obama utilizing international agreements to defeat domestic opposition seems to be growing. Today, Obama floated the notion, floated the notion of going to the UN to build an international and international sanctions regime against our ally Israel, as political, Politico reported. More provocative to Israel would be any softening of Obama's opposition to Palestinian, Palestinian efforts to join the International Criminal Court which the Palestinian Authority will formally join on April 1st. Under a law passed by Congress, any Palestinian bid to bring war crimes charges against Israel at the court will automatically sever America's $400 million in annual aid to the Palestinian Authority, although some experts suggest Obama could find indirect ways to continue some funding, even if only to prevent a dangerous collapse of the Palestinian governing body. Meanwhile, Obama moves forward with his plans to unilaterally destroy the sanctions regime against Iran. Even as the Obama administration insists that the Iranian regime has broken nothing in the interim nuclear agreement, Obama plans to sign a new executive agreement with Iran 
and then go to the United Nations Security Council to relieve Iran of those sanctions, effectively destroying the possibility of sanctions by isolating Congress and pursuing them if the European Union, China, Russia, and the rest refuse to sanction Iran, nothing Congress does will make such a difference and Obama knows it. At the same time, Obama likely is preparing another series of executive actions designed to implement United Nations climate change agreements. Typically, an executive agreement has, that has domestic impact must be accompanied by a piece of enabling legislation passed by Congress. That is a very important sentence. Obama doesn't care about such legalism. In September, he announced before the United Nations that he would tell all federal agencies to start including climate resilience into international development programs and investments. Today, Obama signed an executive order that would look to slash carbon emissions 40 percent compared to 2008 levels by 2025. As U.S. News reported, the president has made robust use of the Environmental Protection Agency, Energy Department, and Interior Department to sidestep Republican opposition in Congress and act on global warming, increasing vehicle, vehicle fuel economy standards, making cities more resilient to the effects of climate change and proposing cuts to carbon emissions from power plants. Obama's move to browbeat Israel at the United Nations is part of a pattern, not just a pattern of dramatically anti-Israel activity, but a pattern of cutting America's legislative body out of the loop in favor of monarchic action in collaboration with world community. And that should scare everyone, not just advocates for the safety and security of the Jewish state. Well, I don't know all of the dynamics that are going on with Palestine and Israel, but I do have very big concerns about what Obama is doing with all of these executive orders. And he just does not care. Um, there are some other articles that you can read. Um, Perry to Obama, go to Congress, not UN, on Iran deal. Obama's Iran scheme is laid bare. John Bolton, a UN vote is irrelevant to the Iran deal. Obama warned not to take Iran deal to U.S. or UN instead of Congress. Um, and yeah, um, an act of Congress is a statute enacted by the United States Congress. A bill must receive a two-thirds majority vote in both houses to override a pres president veto, president's veto. So, yeah, we are really looking at this dictator who just does as he pleases. Um, I thought that I would call the White House comment line and see if I can somehow leave a comment. Let's see. I can. Everyone should have the White House number on their phone in their contact list. Let's see what they will say. If I can even get to a real person. I wonder if I can. Well, I have their number. I'll put it right here. I don't know if you can see this, but let's see if I raise it up a little bit. Um, let's see if I. Interesting that Obama's hand is pointing right to the phone. He's on the phone, and he can point to my phone with the other hand. All right, let's give him a call. Put it on speakerphone. Thank you for calling the White House comments line. We appreciate your call. Please be on the line, and a volunteer operator will be with you shortly. If you prefer to call back at a different time, our direct telephone number is 202 4561111 For additional information about the White House, please visit www.whitehouse.gov and to share your thoughts, click on the words contact us on the upper right-hand corner of the page. For government information by topic, please visit www.usa.gov or call 1-800-FED-INFO. Thank you. Thank you. If you are calling about White House tour information, please press 1. If you are calling about presidential greetings, please press 2. For the White House mailing address, please press 3. 
To speak with the next available operator, please stay on the line. Okay. I guess I'm being connected. Hi, yes. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Hi, I was just calling um, as a concerned citizen about Obama um, rolling out plans to use the UN to circumvent Congress on Israel and Iran. I'm very concerned about Obama signing all of these executive orders and not going through Congress to get a two-thirds vote. Um, and and I'm wondering also if other people are calling in expressing their concerns. Mm -hmm. um, oh well, actually, I'm not allowed to. Um, what I'm about to say, you know, what the other callers are calling about, um, but I can't say we have had a high influx of calls. Oh. From from people, but I, for policy uh, reasons, of course, I can't say what people are discussing. Well, so people are calling in. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Um, wow, how do you feel about what Obama's doing? Um, unfortunately, I can only accept the comments here. I can't, um, discuss, you know, my opinion or what we do here. We only accept the comments here and we forward them to the, uh, president's office. Oh, you forward them to the president. Okay, so what time, yes, what, did the, is it, a? does he listen to the messages? Um, we forward it to him. We're not allowed to tell you the actual procedure. Oh. Through that, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, and and they're forwarded what? Like in the afternoon, at the end of the day? Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but can't advise you um, the procedure. Um, once we, what I, what I can say is, of course, what we through each call is once we record your comment and take down any additional information, we do forward them directly to the executive office of the president. Oh, okay. So, so it's not possible to speak to the president. Um, if you there's, if we do have it as far as if you wanted to try and call the visitor's office number, um, I can't guarantee that either. As far as a contact, if there is some major concern, if you want to reach his attention, because we can't take personal information, uh, okay. um, we always request that you submit online um, a mail into the president. Then he'll have your direct information, um, and then that's the better way to probably reach him and just leave a comment. Right, right. Well, that kind of takes the personal, the personal out of it. You know, the personal one-on-one -on -one conversation out of it. Um, wow. Okay. So he gets the comments at the end of the day. That must be a lot of comments. Wow. Um. Is that, was that your comment? Did you well, have a comment to leave with me? I actually so, have. I actually have another. I have to end the call. I have one more comment. Um, over the okay. weekend, the president flew to Florida um, to play golf on an eight hundred thousand dollar price tag um, for the American taxpayers to play um, golf uh -huh. in Florida over the weekend, and I think the president needs to stay home. I think he okay. can set up a little practice tee on the White House lawn and he can practice his golf swing free of charge. I'm also concerned about all of these trips that he takes um, on the taxpayers money so I have a, I have like a two-part comment if you could just pass that along to him I would really sure. appreciate it. Uh, sure. Alright well I all hope right. you I hope you also have some opinions I know you can't share them but I hope you also have some concerns about what's happening Um, okay, I just, I added, I just added your second comment there. Were there any other additional comments for this call today, Matt? Um, uh, what, what was your name? Can you say your name? Um, uh, my operator number is four. Operator four, okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you very much, operator four. My pleasure. Thank you so much for calling. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> well, hmm. I don't know if he'll get those comments. Uh, I'm not sure if I believe that he even cares enough to read them or listen to them, but everybody should be calling. Everyone should be calling. Have a great day, everyone.